Average motherfucking blows. Average blows. Competitive spirits. Yeah, thank you. Happy day and what it do? Yes, sir. It's your boy K here. Look, being average at anything is never great. Being above average at everything kind of makes you awesome. Yes, sir. And I go by 3% Kai, and the 3 represents the percentage of the world that's identical twins. And, of course, I'm still hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and seeing the truth hurt the people who can't handle it. But what I got to complain about? Today, we got somebody joining our conversation. Meshack, what's up? What's up, you guys? Yes. Uh, I have fun today. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm I, feeling great as well, man. So uh, <laughs> if you are new to the show or you return to the show, we appreciate you. If you're new to the show, K and I, we are identical twins. Meshack, for whatever reason, when people think of identical twins, they think we can think the same thing, feel the same pain. K, I am pinching my forearm. Do you feel that? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> All right. So obviously, we don't feel the same pain. However, sometimes we think the same on occasion. So I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say what's on my mind. I'm going to say what's on my mind. Meshack, I want you to say what's on your mind as well, okay? All right. One, two, three. Three men and maid. Wow, I I knew I knew, he, knew he wasn't gonna, gonna say nothing. Yes, <laughs> so he, uh, he got nothing on his mind. <laughs> Clearly, we are not having identical <laughs> thoughts, none of us. But I assure you, K and I, we are identical twins. Right. However, we have not had identical hernia surgeries. I tell you that it's fact. So, uh, Misha, what are we gonna be talking about today, bro? All right, so today we will be talking about pride, all things LGBTQ, um, you know, that whole, you know, round that everybody likes to make a big deal about. So. Oh, a big deal, huh? A little deeper. Okay, so look, I have um, I have three definitions of pride. Three? Yeah. I got, I got, I got one. You got I got, one? I've seen two. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, so uh, pride, a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievement or the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. Right, that's the one I stayed away from because I was like, that's a lot to write. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got consciousness of one's own dignity. Okay, and then the last one is a verb. Those were two nouns. Then yep. The last one is the verb. Be especially proud of a particular quality or skill. Okay, so we good to jump in? Yeah. All right, so we jump in like this. According to... Statista.com, 69% of Americans seem to be very to extremely proud to be American, while 5% is not at all. So with that information, here is my question, right? Are you proud to be an American? Why or why not? We're going to start with Meshach. Um, number one, I wouldn't consider myself fully American. I had a whole Haitian upbringing. My parents came from Haiti, so... Um, <laughs> okay. Am I proud to be an American? I'm proud to not grow up in a third world country, but uh, proud to be... An American, I'd have to give it a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Yeah, oh, but wait, sorry. okay, so the hard no to be, um, proud to be American, why is that though? Why is it a hard no? Um, I just don't feel like this country is like the best when it comes to, you know, treating the people around them and treating people in general. Uh, as far as opportunities, of course, they give you like great opportunities and it's better than being in a third world country. But if that's all you have to stand for in a country, well, do you know, um, being better than a third world country, do, do you know <laughs> of or have you been to another country where you felt like, you, like the people were treated better? Do I know of? Yeah, or like from experience? Uh, Sweden, um, okay. the UK. Okay. Um, you know, when they pay taxes, they actually get like healthcare and stuff like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know. You no pay argument taxes there. for roads that you, you know, kind of. You just Pam. <laughs> Respect. Tell, if there's more improvements that you know, that you let me know. So then, Kay, yeah, I'm throwing the question to you. Then, are you proud to be American? Why or why not? You know what? I like Mashak's answer right there. Uh -oh. Like, I'm proud to not live in a third world country. Um, I, I would, like, I'm not out here like repping the American flag and stuff like that. So, I mean, in a sense, I am proud to be an American. Like, I'm proud to live in America, but I never, you wouldn't catch me saying, yeah, like, I'm proud to be American, baby. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what about um, you, Kai? <laughs> so naturally, I w I want to say no, naturally, right? Especially since I've struggled with my my own identity. Like, and when I say that, like for example, my wife, she is Dominican, not Dominican. She is Dominican, right? It's a difference. And like, so she knows exactly where her parents are from and her roots and stuff like that. Right. And, like me, has not been the same. Like I know I'm African, but I can't tell you where, what part, or anything like that. Um, but uh. In terms of like like you guys said, not living in a third world country and stuff like that, like of course, like as it pertains to living in America, yes, the freedoms that we have, like of being a human compared to some other countries. Come on, son, how can I not be proud of that? So in that sense, in that sense only, I am extremely proud to be an American in terms of my goddamn freedom in comparison to the ones of not only third world countries, kinda, but yeah, I mean that's kind of what we said though. Like it is, but I had to like go a little deeper. Like nah, it, he thought he thought he was saying something. <laughs> it's I, the same thing. It, it kind of sounds like it's it's the same thing. Okay, but okay. So first off, in a third world country, third world there are third world countries that they do have some freedoms, but the the quality of life in terms of things that make their life a little more convenient, they don't have. 
That's what I was referencing to. Okay, well, you didn't be, you wasn't specific about. We anything. were really specific. We said that we are proud to be Americans because. Of oh, now you're proud, proud to be Americans. Now you're proud to be. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I'm letting you. Uh, you Listen. stand alone right, right there. No, <laughs> we said we said that we're proud of where we're from. Okay. And where where we're living right now. Right. Which I mean, essentially, is saying that I mean we're proud to be American because we're here. Like I didn't have to go through a whole citizenship test and all that other stuff. So, okay. I mean, I'm an American, so like general when I said that, saying like I was proud to be from where I'm at, and as far as how they treat people, no, that's just me disagreeing with where I'm from. But am I proud to be from here? Absolutely. All right. It keeps me safe. Why, why does it seem like, um, like, I'm not, I didn't challenge your answer, and it seems like you guys are, like, challenging. Not no, no, not challenging. But like, no, no. I just wanted to go, when somebody, when you say, like, the third world country, some people might not even know what that means to live in a third world country. So I just wanted to break it down a little bit more, just in case they don't know what that means. Well, you know, libraries are still open. It's closed school. You said libraries are still open? And so it's cool. Okay. And um, Google nowadays, it's, like, at the tip of your fingers, so. But so people watch this show sometimes. <laughs> I didn't know where he was going be, with the hold on. This would be an open, this would be an open. <laughs> This would be an open uh, conversation for you to look up if you don't know what a third world country is. I mean, just, just a, a less fortunate country. <laughs> okay. Up. God. Uh, okay, you got any misconceptions that you want to get in real quick? or you? No, I got, I, got, uh, uh, I got a regular question I want to get into Let's real get quick. It. So I want the question that I have for y'all is at what age were you, you were first attracted to other people, like in general? What age? Who, are we going to start with Meshach? Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean... I knew from, like, as much as I can remember, like, as much as I can remember people, I'm not going to say names, but, like, I remember my first crush. I remember, you know, my first, you know. Like, what yeah, age? How, yeah, what age was that? <laughs> um, I'd give it seven or eight, like, maybe eight or nine, right around there. Okay. Seven, eight, eight or nine. Yeah. Um, what about you, Kai? I can't, I don't know an exact age. However old I was, like, in sixth grade, is, is, that's not eight. That's a little older than that's eight. That's your first crush? That, that I can like, like ten or eleven. That I can honestly remember like calling yeah. and like you know feeling that feeling of love at that time. Right? Yeah, but uh, so when I think about crush, I'm thinking about like you know that fuzzy warm feeling like that's how you're attracted to people. Yeah, you remember yeah. that yeah. at eight? Respect. A fuzzy warm feeling towards somebody. Yeah. You never had a girlfriend before sixth grade. Not that I can remember, bro. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Not that I can uh, remember. <laughs> See, oh, you don't you don't remember anything in elementary school? Not in terms of like dating or anything with the opposite sex. No. Cause that wasn't my. I wasn't like going after that. You, I mean, yeah, it's not about going after, but I mean, I remember like having a girlfriend and freaking. I mean, still remember the girl's name. It was elementary school. Obviously, it wasn't like a serious relationship, but you know, you had that warm, you know, crush I, feeling. You know, I I get what both of you guys are saying. And I mean, yeah. I'm I'm more on the Go only ahead. time I had that warm feeling to be honest is when I drank hot chocolate, sir. That's when I had that warm <laughs> feeling. At, at un, like I'm saying, not in the sixth grade, but wow. underneath that, hot chocolate. <laughs> Let's get it. Yeah, what you about to say came my fault? Yeah, I was gonna say for me, it probably was around like nine and ten, and I, I want to say what Kai was trying to say is like because <laughs> I was I was never focused on or thinking about like being attracted to people. I was doing things kids do, like playing tag, playing basketball, playing sports. Right? It never like what kind of tag, sir? Huh? Was it the hide freeze and go tag? Get it? Oh, okay. oh, what? Hide and go get. Yeah, it. Then learn about that until later in life. <laughs> but <laughs> but right. what I'm saying, and then when I finally, it was it was it came from like me being around older people. Yeah. Is when mm -hmm. like I feel like in a sense I was pressured to. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they, they talking about what they doing. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I got to be doing this. Y'all heard? That's how. That's why I lost my virginity. I was peer pressure to lose my goddamn virginity. I was not ready in that building. Building, but it, it got popping up in there, real spicy. You heard me? What happened? Real you, spicy. What happened? You made it. Yeah, you what, made ha it, what, what happened, Shaq? What happened? I didn't make anything. Oh. I was just listening. <laughs> okay. That's right, because we made these drinks, goddammit. I, <laughs> uh, I had nothing to do with K talking about, okay? <laughs> so uh, am I good to go to the next thing? Yes, sir. On uh, PewResearch.org, they talked about like the, the multi-racial experience, multi-racial experience, right? And this percentage is from adults who have like a mixed racial background, and it includes either them themselves, their parents, grandparents, or if they have any kids. So uh, here, and I'm tying it back into pride, right? So... um. There, uh, sixty percent of those adults felt proud to have a multiracial background, right? And here's, I got two questions actually. My number one question is, what would make someone ashamed of their racial background? We're gonna start with Meshach. Um, definitely their history that they learned about or what they were forced upon when they were growing up. That's number one. Okay. Because um, I mean, you definitely have a lot of people that are not proud to be black, but ooh. Or even even coming from my culture, right now I'm proud to be Haitian. Um, I think I remember come, growing up, like, you know, it wasn't the cool thing to be Haitian. So, I mean, it was like we were definitely picked upon and things like that. So, I think that everything that you're taught, everything that you're given to as far as you're growing up when it comes to that. And you're, once again, goes back to your first question that you first asked me, you know, are you proud to be American? I'm like, 
I'm proud of my freedom, but um, <laughs> I know what I was taught here, and I know what you know was given to me upon here. So, again, another reason why I'm like the fifty-fifty question you can answer me. But like I said, um, when you're proud of your race, or I mean, you you learn that you learn to be proud of your race, just like you you learn to not be proud of your race. So. Right, right. I went to an HBCU, so I mean, I learned to love my blackness. So respect, yeah, yeah. definitely respect. I wish uh, my shout out to John attended. C. Smith. So John C. Smith, God damn it, K. How about you? That question. Want me to repeat it? Are you good? Oh uh, yeah. I'm, oh no, 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 no. Damn, Russ fell. Okay, right. so I'm, uh, a, I'm not alright. <laughs> he should not be getting hurt like this. What would make someone ashamed of their racial eight. background? He should have ate something. Yeah, he <laughs> definitely should have. <laughs> no, wait. No. What? What? What was some? What? I'm sorry. What would make someone ashamed of their racial background? Uh yeah I I agree I agree with me Shaq it's depending on what you what you learned what you heard what yeah okay now um I just have to say there my answer may sound similar to yours and if it does um please uh just go with the flow okay we cool with that yeah I sh- <laughs> so at first I thought um to be honest like that question it was like kind of hard to answer for me like what can make someone ashamed I didn't know but then I had to relook up the definition of ashamed. And um, embarrassed or guilty because of one's actions, characteristics, or associations. So that made it a little easier for me after I looked up that definition. So um, if your tribe or your family has consistently done things that are not in line with who you are or how you carry yourself, then I can see someone being ashamed because of the, the association part. Right? Yeah. And um, remember, Kay, I'm not sure if you remember that uh, we talked about um, the failures of perception and the primacy effect. And what that is, is like someone will judge you based off somebody else in your tribe, yeah. that first impression. It's so like, yeah, if someone... And your family, they doing wild stuff. Like, that would definitely make me ashamed. Like, damn, bro. Now they think that I'm associated with that. So, uh, yeah. And w- what's up, K? What's on your mind? No, I I was thinking, like, wait, wild stuff. I mean, that's uh, it's subjective. It, it is. But there's, like, if, if somebody's going around um, harming people, like, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to subjectively say, damn, he's doing a great thing. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, that's right. what I mean. Okay. Be more specific. Yeah. And Be then, more specific. Okay, and then um, my second question would be: um, Do you think someone with a multiracial background is more open to other cultures, Meshack? Um, so a, a lot of like questions like that, I think, are very um, open ended because I think that when it comes to how a kid is brought up, is all that matters about how they're introduced to their certain cultures, certain other cultures. Like, um, I think if you don't grow up knowing um, or being taught that you should be open to other cultures and open to other people and open to other things, then you're not going to be open to anything. But if you're taught, like, you know, everybody's different and, you know, be open to every other cultures. There's different flavors and everything. There's not one way to do things. Things So you like think that. you have to be taught to be open in order for you to be open? I mean, there's some kids that are really just naturally loving and open. And then you have teachers that come along the way that, you know, are really a big impact on some of these kids' lives and they teach them things. But I definitely think you have to get taught a lot of things and shown a lot of things in order to be exposed to them, Yo, so in order how to react to them. Because I know for me, a lot of times that I grew up, I was taught how to be okay with a lot of different things going on around me because it's different and it's not my life and it's not my thing, but it's somebody else's life and who am I to sit there and judge it? All I right. can know is that it's different and it's not my situation. Okay. Respect. So, you just wanted to ask. Uh, well, no, because the the original question is, uh, do you think uh, someone multi- with a multiracial background is more open to other cultures? Yeah, not, I mean, but I, it's, it's such a general question, right? Yeah, I'm saying, saying yeah, I, I don't think you can answer that because it does like what's going on in the household, the household, what they are taught, all that does play a part. So, because somebody, I would say no, like you can't just say somebody with a right. um, multiracial. I mean, I can see why someone would say yeah, because if let's say your your mom and dad, right, you're being taught this one culture, then you're being taught this other culture, and you love both of those cultures, it's like shit. I want to get to know another one now because I already know two. So I can see, I, I could definitely see that logic. So that it doesn't def- make it true. That, though. If, if that was a question, where it was like if it was somebody that grew up with a household that you know both taught both their cultures from both their parents and both their dad, then I can definitely understand. Right, those are, that's a caveat. But well, you could have made it any anything like we didn't say the mom or dad said with a multiracial um, background, so yeah. I didn't say but, exactly but, how. And that's just, but how you just explained it is assuming that they are like teaching them each culture. They could just be like somebody could be you know a different race and a different race, and they can be teaching them nothing about the culture. Sure. Sure. So yeah, that, that's why I don't think that you can just say that or like it doesn't be them being yeah. multiracial isn't gonna make them more open than somebody who isn't. Okay, and and um so like I'm about to answer that question too. Like and I would I guess I agree with that what you guys are saying. I don't necessarily agree with what you said about like you have to be taught to be open. 
Um, I think it's like if that person, whoever that person is, if they have pride and like going back to the, the literal definition, pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements or the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated with. Um, if you have people in your life that you are truly proud of, I think naturally that with a couple other things will allow you to be open to that person's culture. So if you're proud of that person, then you'll probably be open to that person's culture as well. So, like, I don't think you have to be taught to be open to that person's to- uh, culture, but you, maybe you have to be taught to love who you are so then you can be open to other stuff. I think, so, but I, but then that goes back to, I think pe- some people really love who they are. But right. But they also do not, they're not okay with how people love who they are and how they are. So I mean. They're a judgy and, person? Like, what, what you mean? I mean, you can go, you can start with people that are religious, people that are Christians, people that... I mean, they love who they are, of course. They love that the God that they serve. And this yep. is giving one example. But they don't love... If you're I mean, not on the same page as them... Yeah, they're they don't at love how you live either. Yep. So but it, it doesn't do you, always go... It's not at always... It's not the same thing. That may be that may be a good assumption, but it is an assumption to assume that because they have a, a great relationship to them with God, you're assuming that they love who they are. They might not love who they are, but they have what they consider a good relationship with the Most High. Who knows? Yeah, but I mean... If That's we're true. going off, if we're yeah, and, but but if we're going off what they're saying, because I, I can't go deep into you. If you're telling me that you're in love with who you are, that's that's your truth, and that's your that's your whatever. So I'm gonna go off what you showed me. Right. And so if you're showing me that you love, well, who but you showing are. showing and telling is different yeah, yeah. though. You could tell somebody, yeah, I know who I am. I'm in love with who I am, and then they show you things that contradict that. It's like ah, I know you said that, but look, bro, come on. I mean, some people still love who they are versus even all their flaws. People just really, like I said, it's such an open-ended question. All, all, all the questions I hope to ask are open ended, so yeah. I don't put anybody in a box. All right, yeah. so I, a fact that I seen off trulyexperiences.com, dot com, right? It says male same sex households spend around two thousand forty five dollars more per year on household products. That's funny because that I had that. You did, <laughs> and that's more than like heterosexual households. Mm-hmm. So I was gonna ask, why do you think that is? No, no, let's, so- let's make it more more specific. Let's okay. make it. Well, so instead of the why do you think that is. What products are they buying that contributes to the spending more? God damn it! Okay, household cleaning products. You said it's you no know, like this is period. household like food, clothing, clothing etc. Yeah. You said what? Food, clothing, cleaning. Um, so definitely, after being in a relationship for nine years, I li- I probably lived with my uh, partner for about seven or eight years of my relationship, mm-hmm. and um, I definitely was more of a spender on certain household <laughs> products. Um, I don't know. We just. I think that just like with women and just like with gay people, I think that we are willing to go the extra mile for a different gadget and, you know, something a little nicer and making sure our household is really like, you know, high tech and whatever. High tech. <laughs> what that mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I would, I would Alexa buy, everywhere? I would, I would buy a closing curtain with my remote. Like, would you guys? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Right. You wouldn't care to buy that, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if my okay, pockets so allow me to, though. That's my even, pockets allow me to. Yeah, but we are, I think all of our pockets allow us to is just about what you spend on. Um, we, we can all have our a separate conversation. Right, our budgets are different, right? So, and I don't know if we value the same things. Like, I value my time, and I can see how sometimes, that sometimes. But yeah, I but can see you ask me why you may think it is because gay people. No, really no, right, right, right. I was just asking what was high tech, what that meant. Yeah, like stuff like that. Okay. Um, Alexa, everything. <laughs> um, uh, what's another one that you can think about is just like different kitchen gadgets. Like for example, you can squeeze your own lemons, but I'd rather a lemon squeezer. Oh, so, I mean that's a fact. I mean, hey. but some people aren't yeah, really I, into I, that. I, um, I squeeze my own lines. Things for my own, things for my grill. I would definitely spend on that. People don't really care about stuff like that. Okay. I do. I want a spatula. I want the big tongs that you know you're oh, supposed yeah. to uh, come on, flip right? and flip over. Grilling right, goddamn it. <laughs> I mean, some some people aren't like that. But I tell you right now, gay people are. That's it. All about we, that. Okay, that's we should have had um, Meshach answer that that question last because now I feel like you my, can't tell him right. Uh, uh. Well, not that I, I still have my opinion on it, but I feel like it may be Go a ahead. bit Im- immature. And let Say me know, it. please. Yeah. So, um, I I was thinking that it, it was like evolved around those products that um are essential to their the sex drive. So it's like if they're being responsible, we talking about condoms and lube. You always got to re up on that stuff. So like essentially, you're buying that more than I would be buying that. Yeah, I mean. But two thousand forty five dollars? You think that is that's making a that year, bro? That's yeah, a I know. Year, I know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, he's right though because I mean, I feel like um, now you're talking about single gay people. I feel like definitely you should definitely be spending a lot of money on condoms if that's what you're going to be doing. Okay, okay but with the lube, live. not not single people. Lip, but if you're in a if you're in a relationship, um, lube depends on how much times you're having sex. Uh, True. And honestly, 
lube is such a deep conversation. It's about the kind of lube you're losing. How much <laughs> can it last? Are you buying a big bottle? Like things like that. It's just like how much sex are you having to go through a whole bottle of lube and spend two thousand dollars on it in a year? That's kind of crazy. That is crazy. I thought that's, I that's I, windy. I thought she was gonna say like yeah. Sometimes we use like Crisco or we double up on a vegetable oil or something like that. I thought she was gonna go there and say some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I've heard stories, I'm, not not about like um gay men, but just like in general, people using different types of uh, lubrication. <laughs> I mean, that's a Fendi. I, listen, I bought lube to beat the Schmeets before, right? And when I ran out of that bad boy, I did go downstairs. It was one of those desperate days. You know what I'm saying? Desperate. Yeah, yeah turkey. You have seen the oil? Yeah, squash, squash. I'll use the oil. Yeah. Oh, that shit was burning, though. I should have never did that yeah, shit. No, I, no, I, I never used never. the oil. I, <laughs> I've Yo. used this Dawn soap. Come on, that's worse. Oh, that's, not worse. that's worse. That's worse. That's not worse. How's that worse? What the? Fuck? That's like using um Dove like soap. No, it's, it's like using soap. It's soap. Soap is soap. It's soap. Yo. Soap is soap. It's soap. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. Well, I got it in. Not. I got it smacking. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> you said soap is soap is soap, but I can't say oil. Oil. Oil is oil is oil. No, I think I think both of you were insane. And if it came to that <laughs> point, if it came to that point, y'all should have just learned to just be like, maybe tonight's not the night for it. And we you know what? I have I have matured in that way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Meshach, I'm sorry, but for me, I fiend for what I fiend for. You heard? So, not not no more, though. I'm responsible now. So, I make sure I got that K- uh, KY jelly on deck always. You heard? So, you guys have to jerk off a lube. N- oh, no, 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 no it's no, a better no, experience. No, no, no. Yeah, just when you, when you want to be uh, a <laughs> high class or yeah. high tech guy. High tech guy. <laughs> yeah. But, but, the, but the, that's, that's uh, most of the time, look, I still have a bottle of lube now, right? As you should. That. Hasn't been touched because, like, now you know, with my, with my wife, I gotta worry about a schedule, right? Generally, if I'm if I'm gonna go uh, do the deed, it's Thanks I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get it done fast, so I'm not gonna be like wasting time trying to put some lube on, gotta clean it up, all that. I take shit. my time. Oh, I take well, my time. I, I take my time, hey, it's, baby. It's a secret mission in my household. Goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you Did you it's even answer that question? Why don't you just Why don't you just have sex? Huh? Why don't you just go have sex? Did well, if if my if my wife is the act sleeping, of jerking off. No, if my wife is sleeping or if she seems like she's not, yo, know, sometimes you just don't want to like. I I don't know that like what's your experience or what's your experience with your partners, but like you know, I feel like it's selfish of me. Like maybe we just had sex like, yeah, well, that, I was about to say yesterday, and then I feel like she's I'll be not doing too much. God, yeah, if I so it's like you know what you sleeping, I'm gonna go ahead and get it in. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and well, that's over you. I've known people that you know. Go ahead. Save, um, still try to. <laughs> no, 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 that they still try to, but then I've known partners that also like you know their partners sleeping in bed. They'll so still they go... jerk off next to them. Oh wait, no, what? Oh hell no! <laughs> That's how you sleep on the couch. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to join myself. <laughs> goddamn it! Yeah, cause you. Yeah, nah, fuck out here. I can, there's no way I'm doing that. The video no... popping. Need to hear some noises. I need right. to, you know what I mean? Right. Uh. Uh-uh. So, so but, yeah, they'll jerk off next to them if they know their partner's a deep sleeper. They'll just jerk off next. That's not like it happened to you, bro. Well, well, that happened to you. You woke up and you saw your partner getting it in. If I saw my partner getting hit, then we'd have some issues. For real? For... I mean, why would you want to do that? Like what? Next to me? If you sleeping. If you sleep, And they thinking about well, you. Well, hold on. Yeah. I mean, I that's why I don't do it next no, to no, my no, wife. No, I can answer that question directly, bro. If they if, if you sleeping and they thinking about you, because they, they think about seeing you naked or whatever, and they're like, you right here, I can feel your body, your soul, let's get it. Maybe cause... If they said it like that, come on now. <laughs> come on. Maybe because... Again, selective, because maybe because I'm always down for sex, you can wake me up for sex. So. Oh, okay. See, but that's that boy, because my wife be saying the same shit. And it, it's not true, <laughs> right? Not the, that is not the case. That is not the case. I'm going to need y'all to follow through on y'all I'm words. Not, I'm not a liar on that one. Okay. Right, respect. 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 So. Right. See, wife, you need to be like me, Shaq, because... Uh, <laughs> but anyway, hey, yo, I will... Uh, like if you wake me up and be like, wow, I'm going to act annoyed, but... You gotta act. Oh, you gotta act that's that man, bullshit. Cut, yeah, cut, <laughs> cut it, man. So uh, a misconception that I that I have is it says uh, lesbian, gay, and bisexual people can be identified by certain mannerisms or physical characteristics. How do you guys feel about that misconception, or do you think it's a misconception at all? I do believe it's a misconception, but before I used to think that everybody that was uh, flamboyant was. I thought that's how I can identify, but that's not true. All right, Michelle. I have to agree. Um, I don't think that you can. I mean, a lot of times you can have an idea, and like it's not a bad idea because most people with that characteristic are either gay or what's that or bisexual. Yeah, what characteristic? Feminine, feminine, oh, okay, feminine. Point. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you have some people that are generally straight, and they're a little. What was that about? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. What was it's okay. That about? It happens. Yeah, he's talking it's about somebody. Okay. Yeah. He's talking about. Somebody. He has somebody on the brain. Yeah, he was thinking about should I say the name? Uh, who are you talking about, sir? <laughs> You, should you say the name? That's crazy. No, that's what you... I was pretending to be you, sir. No, I would never say a name. Respect. Ever. Respect. So, hold on. Yeah. How about you, Kay? What? The, oh, obviously, you don't think that's... um you. 
No, it's like, yeah, it's not ready. But no, I mean, I was with you. I'm, I'm glad you said I'm not gonna leave you on that island. I definitely did like that. I think that was a childish mindset to have. Like, I was like, oh, if somebody acts like this, then yeah, yeah. there. But yeah, come on now. That's that's what we're taught, like in in, in this society. Like, anyhow, oh, mm-hmm. uh, what happened? I wanted to piggyback off that with something. Oh, else, go ahead, right? my fault, bro. So, cause like in in that right, like thinking that people act if they act a certain way or something, then they could like you think you know that there's their sexual orientation just because how they're acting, which obviously you don't, right? But it does bother me, like when I read or when I say like homosexual, like I feel like when I, when I see it, I get hesitant in my head, right? Like I don't I don't know if I want to read it because. And I, and I think that it has a direct correlation with like how I grew up and how people would use the word and stuff, mm, and yeah. that that bothers me. That that it should be the same as like just saying like you're, you're a black man, you're a white man, you're right. saying. And like I I just had to get that out because like I don't know what that. Well, I do know what that is, but it, it's something that does bother me. It bothers you today. Yeah, it's still about like, even reading it right now. Like I feel like I don't want to step on nobody's toes, but like I should just be able to say it. Yeah, you right? should. I don't, I, that's interesting that you feel that way still. But like, so you saying you're still drawing back from like those childhood memories? Well, I think I think it makes sense because you said the way you grew up. Right, that's what I'm saying. So you still the way draw you back. grew up with what you all you had was that insult of no homo or calling somebody homosexual. That, yeah, right? and so like people just using it so loosely. Grew, and I right. mean, we got the so the pause now, community. Yeah, the pause <laughs> patrol. Yeah, so it's like I get what you're saying. Like you grew up in a way that it wasn't the. Yeah, they're not they, since they're yeah. using the fucking term wrong. Like now, I, when I read it or see, it feels like it's an insult, and I don't want to insult right. anybody. So, you know what I'm saying? But it's not. So, um, real quick, we're going to do this live for the first time ever. Meshach, how do we think that we can make K um, rid that that feeling when he sees that word? How can we rid K of that feeling? Rid him of that feeling? Yeah, so he don't got to feel that way. Um, that's a hard question, but it's a rid <laughs> Right. <laughs> so you to the, uh, never mind, my goodness. I mean, it's, it's a long history of stuff, and I feel like, you know, I stay in my lane when it comes to stuff like this, because it's just like... <laughs> about to There's a lane to stay in here? <laughs> When it comes to stuff like this, because just like I feel like an activist and people like that know what march to do to get through that. And when it comes to you know, well, that I'm talking about it, that. <laughs> I'm talking about that that feeling that he gets. So he said when he read that, I feel like, like that's a therapy thing. If you feel like I don't, I don't like. I don't, we are here, all right. We are here. We try to be his therapist right now. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know how you can get through the word homosexual. Hey, I, I, because I was. I was. It's good. still a weird word to me sometimes. So. Oh. Mm, okay. I would say just. How like, can I give you advice yeah. on that one? <laughs> it's still a bad word to me sometimes. So what? No, I gotta I, just keep. You didn't say this. that, sir. So I didn't know, <laughs> but now it came out. So I understand why you feel like it's uh, hard to give advice on that. Um, I I would just say when you read it, as long as I know you drawn back from that childhood memory or those experiences, I would just say though you know your intent. Like when you're reading and stuff, you don't mean no bad will by it. So just like you know, just keep that in no, your but head. But even he something, said something completely different. He wasn't saying like if I call people that, then I feel like it's a problem. No, 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 no. Like he said when he reads it, he right. feels like it's a. Insult. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So when you're when you're reading it, like just keep your positive. Like um, you know, you don't mean nothing bad by it. So when you're reading it, it's like I don't know why you're even drawn back, like from those memories when you're just reading it on an article. Because that's how you grew up. Yeah. And when you grow up, you that's know, what happens to you. It's a trigger. It's, a, it's yeah. It's, it's a, a trigger because trigger, you grew up like that. Okay. Uh, so once again, my advice is just like if you can, if you can, when you see it, like think of positive stuff in your head, and then that's my that's my advice. Clearly, it's not good. So, um. <laughs> no, it's not about it. Stop it. Stop I just it. gotta keep it's reading about- it, and 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 people telling me that there's nothing wrong with the word, like, so, and that's all I'm saying. Well, say that shit next time. I did, I, did I speak French or blah blah blah? Positive blah. thoughts. It's like it's not about. It just it still feels cringy. Yeah, it's a cringy thing. Well. Right. Positive thoughts and keep on doing it. And then we can be here, whether it's me, Shaq, whether it's me, whether it's somebody else in that seat, let you know, yeah, okay, that's not, yeah. Because honestly, respect. honestly, homosexual isn't a bad word. What the word that y'all should be focusing on is the the, the F word, the, the faggot word. Why should we focus on that? Why would we focus on that? I don't I don't say that now. Yeah. I'm I'm just saying if a word that should make you any feel type of any cringy is that word. But that makes not sense to make you feel cringy though. Yeah. And that's why I like intentionally, like I yeah, that I haven't heard me personally, I don't. I haven't heard that word in like six years. You have gay friends? I, I not that I know of. So then I can't expect you to hear that word. Now I, oh, I, 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 I hear it, and not not from anybody that I'm associated yeah. with, but like on podcasts or whatever. Still trying to be funny, and also hear the replacement word, which is maggot. Yeah. Um. Is does that? How does that make you feel? Maggot. Yeah. Maggot doesn't make funny. I mean, faggot does though. Oh, okay. No, because just knowing that they're using maggot and replace the yeah. the the f word is like. I don't know. It make you still make you feel some way. Uh, yeah, no. It's just that word that makes you feel a kind of way. So okay. Yo, yo, uh, you, I'm gonna let you get into this. My fault. I, 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 I don't know. I, you had what? <laughs> I had a question. No, what? It's uh. Get on. Get on. Shoot from the hip. All right. Wait. No. This is not from the hip. Okay. Uh, pull out the holster. I got it in my hand. God damn it. Um. 
So I, I was trying to look up and I couldn't. What happened? He looked at you like, uh, okay, in your hand, you just talking about beating your meat off. <laughs> Knock it off, god damn it. My bad. So I was trying to look up where the phrase like coming out the closet came from, and I I couldn't find that per se. But they like coming out, like they said back in the day, it was a term generally used for like uh, full bred women saying that they were ready for the world and bachelors. And then I, it, nowhere I could find where, like, coming out the closet came from. So I wanted to ask, you got, do you think you know where that, like, who started that and w- why they use that phrase and or term for it? So you said it came from women first, or that you, you read about women. That yeah, it, it came, it, from, it say came it again? Huh? You said say it again? Yeah. yeah. It said that it, like, it originated from when they were referring to, like, full-bred women, when they were, like, mature now and ready to go out for, like, the world and bachelors. I can only guess. What that would mean for gay people only because that they women were like their first friends and like you know they become, I mean they ha- they share a lot of similarities within women and things like that. So I think that maybe something like that, especially when the drag queen era came out. But I, I'm just saying it's only me guessing because okay. again, yeah, I grew up in a way later era, right? As far as that, and um, I can't say that I educated myself completely when it comes to you know the whole gay era and like when it started becoming like really acceptable. So okay, I have to give it that and I. I can't talk about the origins, but the the why is obvious. It's like skeletons in your closets because a closet is a place where you can hide things. Yeah. So I I, I have understand to agree with that. that. Okay, yeah. okay. So like for me, when I think about it, it's like yo, everything that's in my closet personally is like all my dope shit that I don't get to wear enough or like you know. My, yeah, my, but you, you control when it comes closet. out. Yeah. yeah you uh, control when that stuff comes out. Well, you so like you said, it's hiding in the closet. To me, like no, like it's like the things in my closet, like I'm I'm proud of all that shit in there. So like, I, well, maybe not y'all. Y'all might think this is extreme, but like I open my closet and sometimes. Cause like I don't wear, I'm wearing average blows merch yeah, all the time, with those, and with, I look at. Go ahead. With those people, they're thinking about they're not hiding their clothes; they're hiding themselves. Yeah, and well, it's just hiding. I guess so hiding. Yeah, you hear the word analogy, hiding, but I analogy. think they feel the same way that you feel. They think their closet is dope too. It's just that they know the world is not ready to see their closet. I think that is that. So yeah. they, they don't think it's they're not necessarily hiding it. They just you know the world is mean. Yep, gotcha. Well, yeah, I'm just okay. Yeah, I want to hold on to my. Yeah, dope shit. My pallies, yeah. got them. Hell <laughs> yeah, those shit look dope. But we are getting to our 30 for 30. Kai, tell them what that is. It is important for you guys to know whether you are an art student, a musical artist, Joe Smoke from down the street, anybody who has a design shit, even if you have an idea that you want on a shirt, sweats, book bag, tennis racket, whatever. Our guy, Fly Basics Floyd, right? He will take care of you and he'll get it done the right way. He does screen printing, vinyl, I think embroidery coming soon. Right. I don't know. However, even if you don't have a design of your own and you constantly find yourself struggling to put together a decent outfit, he got merch, god damn it. Merch. Period. And his logo is similar to Frank's hot sauce. And when I say that, mm. I mean that shit goes on anything. Yeah, period. All right. So when it comes to outfits, you don't even have to try. Because Fly Basics is the absolute simplest way to get fly. All prices are negotiable, so remember to let him know Average Blows sent you, and he might do something for you, god damn it. All right, the 30 for 30 is our Your Honor segment. What this is is we simulate a courtroom-like setting where I'm going to be the prosecution. He's going to be the defense. We're going to argue our cases. So there's going to be an opening statement, the heart of the case, and then we'll close it out with our closing statements. Um, I like to refer to it as the gym class of this show because we spend a lot of time like in the academics, learning and whatever. Mm-hmm. And now this is a chance for me to get competitive, and I'm going to bust his ass. Case, important to know. These are not our personal views, opinions, and our thoughts. Just another way for us to channel our inner competitive spirit in a positive manner. So since we have a guest today, Meshach, you will serve as our honorable judge and it'll be your obligation to determine whether i am guilty or not guilty and if i am guilty that means you agree with kai if i am not guilty that means you agree with me so without further ado here we go on today's docket is ignorance a choice I'm going to be the prosecution, so I'm arguing, yes, ignorance is a choice. Quiet in the courtroom, please. <clears throat> Your Honor, most of us are aware that there are things that we don't know that we don't know. That could be for a multitude of reasons. However, there are plenty of things that we do know, but don't find it important enough to get more information about. That's choosing to be ignorant. For instance, I love Skittles. I can't tell you where they are made, how they are made. I'm sure a quick Google search, as you referred to earlier, would let me know all the answers I'm looking for. However, those answers are not important to me. So I consistently choose to not have that information, choosing to be ignorant. The defense may argue, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, sure. 
right? And we'll let him play that game, that board game. He'll eventually land himself on a guilty spot, and you'll let him know what he won, right? So I just ask you, Judge, um, your Honorable Judge Meshach, to just think about everything I just said, and I'll turn it over to the defense at this time. Your Honor, I am sure that the prosecution will only be able to highlight that ignorance can be a choice in a controlled setting, like he just said, with him with the Skittles. He knows about the Skittles, and he could look up the Skittles if he wanted to, but he chose not to look up the Skittles. All right, great. But I will show that it's not always a choice, and sometimes it's not a choice at all. Turn over to the prosecution at this time. I appreciate that. I like to call the defense to the stand at this time. <clears throat> oh, boy. Here I am. All right. P-E-R-J-U-R-Y spells. What? Okay. It, uh, you wasn't paying attention, but that's okay. That spells perjury. perjury. Are we good? Perjury. Appreciate that, Judge. We're good on perjury? Do what I have to explain? Mean, are we good on perjury? Do I have to explain what perjury is to you? Oh, boy. No, sir. I appreciate that. So I'm going to ask you two questions and two questions only, and I expect you to not perjure yourself. That's cool? Yeah. <laughs> Can you answer the question, sir? Is that yes, okay? Yes, sir. I feel like if I say yes, yeah, I'm going to perjure myself. That's, that's All right. At the end of every show, is it true you say being average is a choice? Right. What does that mean? Can you explain to the Honorable Judge what that means? What's saying, right? Being average is a choice. Can you explain what that means, sir? Being average is a choice. Yeah, you... The average... You choose to be average as if you don't want to do something to better your situation. Okay, I appreciate that. You may remove yourself from the stand. You said two questions. That was two questions. I asked it, is it true? that So you're not even paying attention. Second time, Judge, please, please remember that. You're not paying attention. I said, is it true that at the end of every show, you say being average is a choice? First question. And then second, so you remove yourself from the stand. Um, Your Honor, just please pay attention to his behavior today. All right, anyhow, I like the record to reflect that some of the things you cannot choose, here are some of the things that you cannot choose. You can't choose um, being born, who your biological family is, and who changes your diapers at two weeks old. These are things that you cannot choose as a person, right? However, as the defense just stated, you can choose to be average because you could do things in a particular skill or whatever to not be average in what that is, right? Um, so you can also choose to be ignorant uh, because you don't want to do those things. Think about that, Judge, and please keep his behavior at the back of your mind, because that was unacceptable in this courtroom. I do turn it over to the defense at this time. Don't know what he's talking about, sir. But, Your Honor, I will read the definition of ignorance. Lack of knowledge or information. That's the definition of ignorance. Now, I'd like to call you to the stand, the Honorable Judge Meshach. I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and I ask that you be as honest as possible, okay? You got it. Good. Did you know that roller coasters were invented to distract people from sinning back in the 1880s because they spent most of their time in brothels? No. You didn't know that. Did you know that in 1905, ice pops were invented by an 11-year-old named Frank Epperson? No. All right. Did you know that sloths, the animal, can actually hold their breath longer than dolphins? No. Okay. So would, would you say you're choosing to be ignorant on those facts or you simply just didn't know those things. Um, I guess from your definition of ignorance, it, I, I really wouldn't call that ignorance. Um, I would just call that just kind of a knowledge that you missed. So it's not my definition, by the way, your honorable judge. Sir, repeat the definition of ignorance. Lack of knowledge down. or information. Okay. That makes sense then. So, yeah. So you're saying that you're, you're choosing to be ignorant on those facts or you just didn't know? I just didn't know. All right. But that is choosing, that at the end of the day, that is choosing to be ignorant because you chose not to look up those facts. So if we're talking about that, then yeah, we're, we chose to be ignorant on those facts. Okay. Because if that's the definition, then yeah. So, so would you agree that there's more things that you don't know of? Of course. There's a million things I don't know of. So would it be fair to conclude that when you don't know something and it doesn't cross your mind, you're not choosing to be ignorant on the matter, you just don't know of it? Yes. When it, But... Um, That's all the I, questions I have for you, Your Honor. You can remove mm. yourself from the stand at this time. No further questions. I'd like to turn it over to the prosecution. I appreciate that, Judge. It's important to know <clears throat> that we are getting to our closing statements. All right. Um, I uh, it almost seems like the defense is working with me because I did start by saying there are things that we don't know that we don't know, and that's not um the. That's not necessarily considered being ignorant. However, Your Honor, ignorance in its totality, it isn't bliss. When the truth is revealed, some people may realize they were happier being clueless. Like they didn't want to know that information, yeah. right? <clears throat> so that's not bliss. 
Your Honorable Judge, you can choose to look up how many goats it takes to clear an acre in reference of grass, right? However, just as the examples that the defense was given about the popsicle and the roller coaster, right? That information isn't relevant to you currently. Yeah. So, of course, you're not going to know that stuff. That being said, if you are now aware of that stuff, right, you can choose to go in more depth looking that stuff up. But just like me, I'm going to assume that you won't. So you're going to choose to be ignorant on said information at the uh, the defense, the popsicle stuff, right? <clears throat> Anyhow, Your Honor, I've been counting the defense's moves. After he closes out his term, he will have landed on the guilty space on that board game that he was playing. All right? All I ask for you is to remind him of what that means. Guilty. Thank you for your time, Your Honor. I rest my case. All right, Your Honor. It, it is just a fact that no one can know everything. That's a fact. Right? And I, I, I didn't want to, because I, I do want to highlight, people can choose to be ignorant, right? But what about, when force is involved. And when I say force, there, there's kids that's homeschooled, right? They don't have a say in that. Now, they just have to have faith that their parents are teaching them everything. And there's some extreme, if you were oh, Amish, no technology, right? They just have to go off of what their parents said. They their parents could be teaching them anything. Do they have a choice in the things that they learn? They don't have a choice. Oh, it's, it's, I'm sorry. I was asking you a question. You can, go ahead. You, I mean, you, you said. Well, uh, oh, no, you go ahead. <laughs> they, they, they don't have a choice in, in, in what they learn. So if somebody came in and asked them something, right, and they didn't know the answer to that, and then even if they wanted to further look it up, they asked their parent. Their parents tell them whatever they want them to know. Somebody easily said, that's ignorant. They don't have a choice in that. So there will always be something you lack knowledge of or information on. It's not a choice. That's called life. With that being said, I rest my case. Your Honorable Judge Meshack, when it comes to case innocence, how do you find him? Innocent. Yes, Darky! <laughs> yes, sir! Please, please, please meet us in the comment section. And, uh, I mean, there ain't nothing I can do about that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Vishak, may you please um, let us know how you came to that ruling? Um, well, to be completely honest, your argument started out really strong, but then it ended up really trash. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what does that mean, trash? Yo! I was about to explain. Oh. Um, he was giving you really good points as, to, as far as what ignorance means and what the definition you decided to use. If you're a little more specific on what you were talking about, then maybe you could have won your argument. But he was able to be very vast and, you know, open with how you determine ignorance and what ignorance are you talking about. So, I mean, that's why you kind of lost very miserably. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Miserably, guys. <laughs> I mean, even even in there, you like you contradicted the things that he was saying. Uh, you lost, sir. No, uh, damn, I can't see. That's, that's you can tell he doesn't win often. Like he don't even let me get a a, a, a word in. I'm about to just get a word in. Somebody, like, yeah, I contradicted lost, myself. No, no, he contradicted himself. Like I me, mean, you he, said you did say he. You contradicted yourself. You, no, you, no, when he was talking, like he he contradicted like what what you said, and I thought that was working in my favor. Is like when he was like, no, but you can look up the stuff, like the things that you don't know. You still are choosing to be ignorant to it because you're not purposely going out of your way to look up that well, stuff. And then that's what when yeah, I get the example of the He was saying like you decide you asked if people can choose to be like ignorant. And it's like, I mean, yeah, everybody can choose to be ignorant. Right. Yeah, you can choose to be ignorant, but there's also situations where it's not. But like you're trying to get into what like an explanation for why you lost, dog, you lost, do better, goddammit. You hey, heard look, I, I I I went often, so that doesn't bother me. Anyhow, um so I there's something that I wanted to get into. About it. <clears throat> Uh, let's let uh, the defense celebrate real quick. Want to uh, put to he take said, a shot? Oh. He said, I went off then, but then uh, asked. Oh. I need another one. <sighs> so um, according to the 2019 census, there are 191,000 households with children living with the same-sex parents. Here's my question. How does having the same-sex parents impact a child? Meshach, we're going to start with you. Um, uh, it doesn't impact the child. I feel like. It all depends on how you're raised. Um, yeah, that's kind of my simple answer. It's like it doesn't really matter how, 
who is parenting you. It's just about how you're raised and how you're brought up. So okay, okay, okay. yeah, I, I respectfully disagree. I think it does impact the child. <clears throat> Not so you got to think about so uh, the same sex uh, household, right? That's raising a, raising a child. When that child goes to school and they're seeing other parents and that's like not the same sex and i, I do want to say like that's that would be like more what they see then they i can expect them to feel some type of way maybe or maybe somebody would make fun of them because of that and I, that can impact them i think and the question was how you're raising the house impacted um when you have a single parent i went to school a million times and i saw people with two parents and did it impact me and make me think about it yeah mm-hmm. same thing about i guess my mom grabbed up me everybody's situation is different right so it's about it sticks my answer that it's about how you're brought up. Oh, I'm not. I'm. I just said I. Dis, uh, I respectfully disagree. I'm uh, not. But look, that's. I'm, I'm so. It's not about for you to agree, but look at a different side of it. Saying that like, we all grew up in different parent households. Like, um, some people whose their aunts um brought them up and they live with their cousins. Uh, other people they didn't grow up with anybody. They grew up with their godparents. Hold on. So I do want to apologize because I, I just said no, I dis because I thought you said that um you don't think it can affect them and I'm saying. I think it, it can, can impact, them, impact right? them. Yeah, no, it can impact them, but it depends on how you grew up. Because honestly, yo, you grew up in different households and you meet a lot of different people just like you guys or just like anybody around us. When you grew up in a different household that's considered the norm in America, then it's all about how you grew up. I mean, for some reason, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like what you heard was instead of like, does it impact them? I feel like you heard, does it make someone a shitty human? Mm-mm, I didn't oh, hear that. Oh, it, it seems like like how you're like being. I'm not saying you're being defensive, but how you're responding to Kay's answer. Because I do, I do like. I wasn't even thinking about what you said. Like other people can make fun of them, and that can impact them. So overall, having the same sex parents, it it does. But that goes into can bullying impact them, or can can that impact? Because regardless, people are gonna go through bullying. Okay, but it's it, not gonna but, just but be that about gives, that. Gives them something else to be bullied about. Right, the direct result of having the same sex parents. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, everybody has different layers of what they can be bullied about, though. Absolutely. 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 And that can be so. one, is, is all I'm saying. I mean, they can still, yeah, they can still try to roast you for who your parents are regardless, right? Mm-hmm. Like, your dad's fat and whatever, <laughs> right? But right. I, that just gives, like, like I was going to say ammo, but, like, not ammo, just people. Man, pe- some people can be shitty, God damn it, and they'll find fan. anything just to. Teach your, teach your kids to hit back. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the answer. Knock them up like fight night. Not, even, not, even, not even just hit back in a physical way, but. V- verbiage like you're, I, you're in a different realm you're gonna people are gonna make fun of you for whatever you, they're gonna make fun of you for mm-hmm. and that's just what america brings and teach your kids to to speak back so okay right just not when debo talking god damn it but <laughs> debo too Stick oh D- <laughs> so when you leave i'll be talking again kai what about you no, what was D- your answer? No, D- no debo too stick up for yourself um respect you, you're gonna look better fighting for yourself right i don't care how big you are or small you are we make smart, yeah. Yeah, make smart decisions. Yeah, definitely make smart decisions. Make I mean, smart decisions. I, I know who I'm going to fight. I know who I'm going to say. Uh, I'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you that right <laughs> hey now. back. Okay. Anyhow, so me answering that question off gate, <clears throat> I say whether it's the same sex or not, it's um, if it's a healthy relationship that they see in the, the house that impacts them. So similar to what Meshach was saying, like how they're, they're raised. So like I feel like if they're exposed to a lot of fighting and arguing, that's going to impact them. Um, I do I do see your part, right? Um, your point, I mean. Um, however, it is uh, my opinion that having the same-sex parents plus, like, curiosity, of course, can influence a child to try some things because that's what they see, so they're curious about it. So, like, here, here's my example. Hear me out, Meshach. Um, so, I'm not saying that the, um, like, it will influence them to like a certain thing, but I'm saying to try. So, here's the example. Like, so, uh, uh, a boy being raised by two gay men, right? The boy sees his parents kiss often so then naturally i think like he's curious so then he kisses another boy now that doesn't mean that he's going to like it but that influenced him to try it I can see that. now whether he likes it or not that's on what he experiences what he so, feels i guess my only thing with that is when i when i answer that and doesn't like i said it's not me coming off a defensive or combative yep. Yep. it's more so me saying like okay so i grew up around a bunch of straight haitians where did i try it you, you said you had a girlfriend why though I, I mean, oh, you saying that because, she wasn't influenced by anything? Because no, no, no. That's what society society taught me. I grew okay. up in an era where so you were influenced by society. That I was wrong. Um, no, I wasn't. Influ- I was forced. Oh, influence forced. and force is no, two different you things. You were right. Influence means I did it because I saw it and I liked it and I wanted to try it. Forced means that you are seeing being forced upon something that, like, whether it's church, whether it's your family that grew up in Haiti, whether it's you have a bunch of Haitian siblings. That's what force is. But <laughs> the then, is but then, 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 then there's, then there's choice. When you are allowed to learn 
at the same time and have your freedom of choice, that's different because now you're not influenced, now you're not forced, but now you have a idea of choice. It's you have an you. idea of choice. It's up to you. And um, one thing that my parents did te- teach me, and the one thing that life taught me, and like whether it was my friend that I brought was brought around, was I was allowed to have the freedom of choosing what I wanted to do because that's what my feelings. I didn't get forced to do anything besides having a girlfriend, which was wrong. And then I also did not get influenced to do anything because I didn't, I didn't see my brothers with girlfriends and be like, I wanted to have a girlfriend. It was more so like, well, if this teaches me, if the, y'all are forcing me to teach me this is right, that's why I did it. But then again, it goes to all the definitions. Oh, okay. Forced, influenced, and choice. If you are choosing upon your kids to say, hey, this is what life's all about, you can choose what you want to do because this is going to be with your feelings well, are going to align. Because you can't teach people with feelings. Right, but I do want to respect, you said that influence, you have to like it to be influenced by it. And I don't think that's, um, I don't agree no, 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 with that. No, 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 okay. no, no. When it comes to influence, if you're gonna try it, you're gonna either gonna like it or you're not. But that that, oh, that takes out that. But, but that takes out the liking or not 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 part of it because when it comes to LGBTQ, you either like it or you don't. So right. if you saw an influence that made you try it, great. If you didn't see the influence that made you try it, great too. But I promise you, there's nothing that can change you to say that if you liked it or not. Not that you're choosing to do that. Yeah. So you're. Uh... Just like saying what have- I said. I said I said that you'll be influenced to to try it, but whether you like it or not, that's on you as a person. So you see it and you influence. Like, like I saw it, so let me just try it because I have seen it. Hold on, we uh, th- it is Pride Month, right? Yeah, it is. God month. damn, we went this whole time without saying God damn. Happy <laughs> Pride oh, Month. Happy Pride Month. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so in there, I, um, it said I read a stat that said there was twenty different like Pride flags. Did you know that? Yeah. What the fuck? I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. I see a bunch all the time. And I, I, the, the one that I don't like is the kind of one that we're wearing right now, uh, kind of. Like the rainbow. I don't like necessarily the rainbow one. I think that's the most basic one in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, I did, wait. I didn't even know this was like a... I wasn't... Just, well, like this, not the, this is not the flag, but oh. I'm saying like just the... I think that like the, the colors and stuff, like that, that's whack to me, bro. Which, so what's your favorite one then, Mishak? Do you have a favorite is one? that black or one? Or do you Oh. Yeah. Uh, they, I don't. You don't even like the flags at all? Hmm? You don't like the flags at all? Um, I mean, I can't say I don't like them. I don't um always wear them. But I do feel like um, when it comes to representation and because I love my community and because it makes them feel represented, I do love them. So Okay. I, I have, um, so, so I want to get a little bit more serious real quick if we can. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is um, the Journal of Medical Ethics says gender affirmation, affirming surgery is currently recommended for individuals at least 16 years of age. So here's uh, my question. I'm not sure. I, that's probably like this is probably like a controversial topic. I'm not sure, but how do you guys feel about that age, sixteen? <clears throat> Start with me, Shaq. Um, when it comes to age, I feel like you have every everybody has a different mindset when it comes to age. I think that everybody um is a little different. I feel like since I've been twelve, I've been kind of a grown up, but there's other people that. You know, didn't grow up the same way and didn't have right. the same. So, again, a lot of these things are like, just like with every other. Like, I, I hate all these studies on gay people because just like, I hate all the studies because when it comes to their age and things like that, it's just like, I mean, how old does it take you or how long does it take you to figure out that you mean like a boy? Like, I don't get it. Like, yeah, I, it's not about sexually. It's just about liking them. Like, it's just. Flirting with them, things like that. Y'all flirted with niggas when y'all was <laughs> well. In seventh, I, eighth grade. I think it depends what you is, what's the defi- define flirting like. But also define like flirting, flirting with a boy. Like, come on, man. No, uh, I'm, you, I'm saying like because everybody I, and, de- you know, defines flirting differently, right? Yeah, but that doesn't matter because I grew up with y'all. Right. Oh, well, so <laughs> I can literally call y'all out and say, "Don't call me out, sir." There, there's there's not a time that I've seen y'all for like whatever girlfriends y'all had, middle school, whatever, whatever girlfriends y'all had, or whatever. Little things y'all had because what you liked girls, right? Like that like, gave you a cute yeah, feeling. Yeah, I didn't. Well, cute yeah. feeling. No, nah. it gave you a feeling, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. A feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gave you a feeling. <clears throat> so why is it we have to go through all these studies about you know mosties and it's like if I like it, I like it. No, no, but I, I would That's say it. though the the age is more so in terms of like the surgery and not in terms of like you should like a boy or a girl the same sex at sixteen. When it's you get an abortion, surgery. uh. That's a good question. I don't. I guess as soon as you get pregnant, right? Yeah, you get an abortion. Well, but like, do you mean like without like parental? Because 
Oh wait, actually, you don't I think need you, parental. Yeah, you don't. You, you don't. You never actually, need parental because they're trying to like you know protect. And you. I agree. I think all women should have abortions. So don't cut me up. On the <laughs> I think you're just trying to make a point. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying, everybody does does this age thing, and it's like, okay, so if they go into get an abortion, should we lock the person up for having sex with? Like, I don't. What's the age? Shit, thing I, look, right now? I I agree too. Like, what, like, cause the age is it's it's a slippery slope. Cause in other countries, right, like you can start drinking at like sixteen or fourteen or something like that. So yeah, it's a slippery slope. I don't know. There's no perfect. I think a lot of a lot of people like to base questions off the country you grew up in. It's like this country is not all the way right. So why is that always our basis of where right and wrong is? Right, right. They've never been all the way right. So how is that always our basis of what right and wrong is? Okay, that that's 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 true. Um, so you you not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know how I feel. I, I don't know. There's not a perfect age. There's not like everybody. Every individual will be different. I know what. There's like health concerns, but there's always going to be health concerns. So I mean, I, I wouldn't be able. Like I don't know how I feel about that stat. So it's, I'm not even asking about a perfect age because it just uh, it said that at 16 that's when they're allowing it. At 16, so that's what they're currently allowing. At 16, if you're 15, you can't do it right now. You got to wait till you're 16. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I don't know how I feel about that stat because like it's perhaps, not a stat. Or, that's the tr- or the procedure or what yeah. the rules the. Policy. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay. Um, so I mean, similar to what uh, Mishak was saying at first, like in terms of uh, maturity of just knowing yourself, right? Like, because it took me 29 years to know who I am, but it takes other people a lot sooner to know who they are, yep. what they like and stuff like that. So um, I would say like, however, some people figure this out, like whether it's soon or not, 16 seems to be a good age and it could be potentially earlier, but like 16, you could be a junior in high school or a senior in high school, depending on how early your birthday is or late right. your birthday is exactly. actually. Right. So um, my, my opinion is um, that like, I like that age and it's that's why it's important in my opinion to like let um, your children, like if you have a boy to let them play with like dolls, if they want to play with dolls or the girls, they want to be like tomboys because they might at a young age, they might not have the language to articulate themselves, but if they're Asking to play with these things or reaching for these things, that means that they're curious about it, and that's how they're expressing, that's how they're communicating with you. Like, yo, I, I want to see what this is. And I feel like yep. if you allow them to do those things up until 16, they, they're going to exactly know what they want, how they feel about things. So, yeah. yeah, 16 is a good age. And if it was 15, I would say the same thing. As long as the parents are letting their kids express how they feel and feel what they want to feel and stuff like that, yes, Can't let agree. them do that shit. Let's get it. As much as my mom hit my hand about a doll. Yo, but, <laughs> but but I will say though, um, like if you want to have the the conversation about like permanence, you can have that conversation. Like just reminding them like what permanence means and stuff like that. However, like don't have the conversation like and your intention is really to get them to change their mind that they want to get that surgery. All oh, like, right, yeah, that's just, that's just let it be the fact. Like right, like, just like yo, this is what permanent life. means. Yeah. yeah, but don't be like going in like yeah, this is what permanent means. Now change your mind. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Yo, so hold on. I, I this this is. I mean, I, God damn, I should have said this already, but. <laughs> This is the finish this segment, right? What this is, I'll tell a little story and then I'll ask you to finish it, okay? All right, so it goes like this. Sam was starting to have thoughts about the same sex, and a lot of them. Sam didn't really know what it was or where these thoughts were coming from. Sam didn't know how to put these thoughts into words, but Sam did know it would be best to talk to someone as that could help a bit. When Sam did finally muster up enough confidence to speak to someone, Sam decided to start off by saying, finish this. And I'm asking you to finish that. Sam had finally courage to speak to somebody that he knew that he can trust and somebody's in his situation or has been in his situation and found out to go with his feelings and go with what he felt was right in his heart. And that's it. It's great like that. That's it. I, I, I want to. Uh, OK, so what is the, the best way? And perhaps you can answer this last. Um, so I'll start with you, K. What would you. And this is all our pains. Right. Like these are yeah. our pains. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what is the best way to come out to family who might not be open or as accepting as they should be? We're going to go with Meshach last. Right. So you, K, how do you think someone can go about that? Honestly, this this is where I would say I don't know. OK. I, I don't know. That's fair. Me, I would say indirectly. Don't put yourself in that situation like to to get hurt. If you know that like your family are not open and you can sense that, shit. Surround yourself around people who you know generally love you and they'll see your family will see some posts on Instagram or social media and then if they ask why was why you didn't come out to me, then you can explain exactly why you didn't because every time I did X Y Z around you, you made this reaction, you made this remark. That's why. Um so that's my opinion. What about you, uh, Mishak? Um I mean, my advice is gonna be a little different because <laughs> he smiled too, right? <laughs> the way the way I the way I came out and the way I'm gonna tell other people to come out is very very different. Oh, I'll share a little bit about how I came out. I it. came out. Um, I just brought my boyfriend home from a summer 
Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> That's very direct. Yeah, right. It was my first, it was my first boyfriend ever, and I brought him out for my first uh, college summer break, and I brought him just. I was like, right, with my friend. So, but like when you say you you brought him out, like you brought him home, and like ha- like did your family know right hey, away? Hey guys, this is my friend, but I mean, like I was posting pictures all year, and you know, <laughs> so. But did you like kiss in front of your family? Like, how, what stamped no. it? No, I mean, come on, I mean, come on, I was posting pictures all year. Uh, if oh, you're that stupid, then I don't know. What I'm to not tell sure you. if your family like follows you or nothing, so I don't know. That's what oh yeah, no, my, my family they followed me. Of course, they saw him all over me all the time. So that's what I'm saying. No. That indirect approach. Look, man, you're gonna see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, but so did they you know, get it? Brought, did all of them get it? Or, when I brought or? him home, of course, I think some people got, it, some people didn't. But <laughs> I've always actually actually been very grateful to have a good friend circle that like one by one people even knew anyway. Mm-hmm. But I think that um is definitely important, especially when you're in that LGBTQ community, is find people that are really trustworthy and find people that really do love you and are around you and are for you and kind of just already know. You can always tell when people just already know and find people you trust. Cause Wait, hold on. Yeah, can I ask you, you say you can tell when people already know? What do you, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean when you say that? That, have, that know that he's saying that if, if I'm a gay, friends. they know that I'm gay already. Yeah, I had yeah but how, so I'm asking, oh, how do you know like that people they already, that know. already know? I had friends that, you know, slowly stop asking my girls, slowly stop, you know, whenever you're ready, it'll... Oh, okay. Because um, I was just because you know like with the, the misconception no, no, no. earlier. Meshack, so how are you telling people? So that's how you came out. How are you telling people? Because you said it's oh, very right. different. So how are you telling people to come out? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, my first thing is always, um, if you grew up in a small time, go find some love and come back with it and be happy as you are because it's going to be the best feeling of your life because you're not going to care about anything else but you and your partner. And if you're still in a small city, leave to a big city. <laughs> Cause is that because like there's so much going on in the big city where no one's it's just not worth it. it's not worth if, if people aren't supporting you and people aren't going to support you and honestly the, the dating pool has pee in it if anybody knows hey, what that yo. means <laughs> I don't know what that means <laughs> what the, what the, the dating you know when you get in a pool yeah, it has pee supposed in to be it clean. So they said the, there. but the dating pool oh so the, oh okay. the gate say it the gay <laughs> dating pool has pee in it <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but is it clear? Piss in it. Clear piss? Especially, no, no. No? Like, dirty, nasty piss in it. Yo, so what grinder got? It got shit on it? I don't do grinder. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right, so real quick. The, this... the face card is too top tier to so be doing grinder. Hey, sorry. yo, hey. respect. Yeah, yeah. Say, say so, that shit. So yeah, say that shit. shit. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to look at myself right now. I know I look good. So hey, crazy. talk that never. shit. So yeah. The DM's about to be lit. Grinder. Who? What? Me? Jacked any of that? Like you, you, and everybody. I wish somebody would lie on me and tell me I did some fucking grinder jack. Cause I don't do that. You know what? I'm making a fake me shack profile tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I wish there was back in my days. I wish there was a grinder for like, you, you probably, know what I'm saying? You know, you probably got some money off my face. I already know it. Oh, say that then. Hey, only fans, offered. here we go. Yeah, but look, this is for you um, directly, me shack, because I, I don't understand this, right? Like, so the LGBTQ individuals experience a higher rate of unemployment. Why, how? Why? Like, why is that? Um,. Hold on, let me preface it by saying, like, Meshack is not a, prof- like, uh, the... No, I know, but it makes more sense. I, yeah, I know, but how are you saying, like, well, how is that? Why is that? Like, yeah, like why do you yeah, think I'm that not, is my I'm not, a corp- I'm not a corporate body, so I don't <laughs> no, know. I know, but I'm saying, like, what, what, why would you... I don't know, man. I feel more comfortable asking you than me giving my um, opinion. Or I don't even I mean, I wouldn't... I really, I really wouldn't know. I mean, I mean, I feel like you have a lot of CEOs that have a lot of, you know, old morals and, you know, mm-hmm. like... I think that when gay people get around just like women, they uh, kind of take over the room and take over the world, so... Hey, hey, man, say it, man. Gets them offended. <laughs> it gets them offended, you know? I don't know what to tell you. So the, now that you said that, like, with the the, old, if the the older the CEO, that didn't make sense to me. They got that old uh, mindset, right? And like, I mean, the older and the employees, you know, like, not every, gay people aren't, aren't everybody's cup of tea. That, that, that's very true. And um, I, what you said about they come in, they they take over everything, <clears throat> not on this podcast, got you. <laughs> it did not happen today. It did not happen it, today. It did, kind of, though. It yeah. almost did. I'm well, not I, I like that you use the word kind of, so we can collaborate yeah. and make a fire-ass episode. That's what that means. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, 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 it did. Y'all, y'all going to see it. It's fine. Okay. I'm, <laughs> he's so. referring to the, um, the stuff that we talked, we had the conflab <laughs> off-air about some improvements that we can no, make. No, we're talking but, about on-air, too. Oh. Hey, what the? F- I you mean, look, I'm gonna go ahead and let him have that. Yo. God damn it! You, you want to get in some real quick? Okay, where we at on? Uh, yeah, we can. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I just want to get to this last quote. Yeah, quick. Go, my go, fault. Go, I'm getting to this go, quote. Go, go. And um, They're okay. So excited to have me here, guys. Well, yeah, the, I was wait, waiting to have me. Like, come on now. Uh, yeah, we we, uh, we was waiting. Yo, definitely, yeah, we, we were waiting. waiting. We was waiting. He made us wait. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we want to talk about that. Huh? Huh? Okay. Nothing. We want to talk about making you guys wait. I mean, we can. I don't mind at all. I'm not. No, no, no. no we ain't going to make y'all wait no more. Look. I said, look. Here's the quote. Are you kidding me? 
Here, here, here's the quote that I got. No person is your friend who demands your silence or denies your right to grow. Alice Walker. Damn! That shit fire, bro. Yo, nah. can you, uh, I'm going to put my voice on. <clears throat> Don't do that. Just, just right, read right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no person is your friend who demands your silence or denies your right to grow. Alice Walker. Fendi. That's a fucking Gucci sock. You heard me? Louis Earring. That's that's a Prada glass. Michelle, you don't like the quote, man. You don't like the quote. Uh, what the? F- oh, <laughs> so how would you sauce that up, sir? He said, or what, what don't you like about it? He says mid. I mean, just go ahead. Wait. Oh, so your friends demand your silence? Your friends make you be silent about certain issues? Me saying eh? Just go ahead. No, I'm me. asking you a question, sir. My friends don't make me demand my silence. Oh, do they I'm de- the least de- silent friend? Okay. Of my do friends. they deny? Do they deny your right to grow? No. Oh, but it's just not a fire quote though. That's you saying yeah. it's mid. It's mid. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. My fault. You know what? I did get a little defensive because I looked that up and I thought it was fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? I expected everybody to say that shit was fire. I thought it was I fire. I thought that was gonna be a bomb drop. I did. <laughs> not, oh, it, oh. It's wow. like a rabbit chew. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all appreciate the little ASMR you gave us, my guy. <laughs> Yo, so look, okay, when it comes to pride, how you feel people could be above average? So how I think someone can be above average when it comes to pride is just knowing you are important. Kai and I are here to tell you that you are important, Meshach. You are important to people or to a person, right? So whether that be your friend, sibling, dad, mom, or even that stranger who keeps liking and commenting on everything that you post... Take pride in the fact that there's somebody out there waiting on you, counting on you, or just looking forward to you being you. That's how I believe you can be above average when it comes to be pride. And Meshach, do you want to give your opinion on how people could be above average when it comes to pride? Um, so, like I said, I came to talk about uh, pride and LGBTQ, all things all around. Um, I think that if anybody is struggling with coming out and being yourself and really living your truth, Always know that it's going to get better as long as you surround yourself around by great people and great family and a great family circle. And family doesn't always have the people that are blood. Always understand that you will get through. And, um, yeah, that's what pride is and being prideful and knowing that who you are and you love yourself. So respect, bro. Respect. That's pride. <clears throat> now, yes, sir. So now we're getting ready to close the show out. And how we do that is with information a guru will make you pay for. And what that is is usually someone, they'll come up on some type of influence and they'll take advantage of people's ignorance. We talked about that earlier, right? <clears throat> Remember, people, ignorance is expensive. The less you know, the more you will pay. And I swear that's the truth. I'm going to let you guys know until you actually get it. So what they'll usually do is they'll sell you classes, courses, or sometimes in-person sessions of basic information or sometimes Meshack information that just doesn't work at all, right? Mm-hmm. So this is for anybody who struggles with showing their pride and is considering buying an overpriced ebook now that book can potentially help you out i'm sure it could that's why that person wrote it right however why spend money if you don't have to so i hope you'll listen to my opinion with these tips i'm about to give you in showing your pride so number one <clears throat> learn your history or history as some people in the lgbtq like to say right if knowledge is power ignorance can be a weakness i believe that so learn your history number two that was good. appreciate that bro yep. number two get out and experience your culture or your people you may taste some great food if you that you never knew existed if you go out and just like food or anything else you might be proud that your people made that so just going out and experiencing things all right um so get out and experience your culture or your people that's number two and then number three express your feelings to the people you love so being proud is accepting yourself and just like me if i'm sure you have feelings express them tell the people you love how much they mean to you because that, that might encourage them to do the same. It's hard for me to imagine that you're not proud of people who mean a lot to you. So those are three tips that I feel like you can do. And if you're already living your life like it's golden, full of pride in everything you do and everything you are, that's yes. great. Please share your journey and inspire those who aspire to get to where you are. Now, if you are three minutes away from buying that ebook that will suggest ideas on how you can express your pride, just know that in that book, they may say some things that I just told you and make you pay for it. Now, Meshach, mm-hmm. if you want to be found, where can people find you to connect with you? Uh, you can find me on Mr. Poppington on Instagram. Uh, Mr. Poppington is M-R-P-O-P-P-I-N-G-T-O-N. Again, Mr. Poppington on Instagram. You can also find me on Twitter. I do suggest that you find me now because I will be disappearing soon and on a whole new platform and a whole bigger platform. And, um, yeah, so... Uh, 
Let's get Catch it. Catch me now where the price is low. <laughs> Instagram doesn't make my boy. He makes Instagram. You heard me. It's great yeah. like that. Do we have your permission to put that in the uh, show, show notes? notes? Yeah, you should definitely have permission. Oh. Do it now. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, being average blows, but not when you have a competitive spirit. So listen and always remember being competitive is a positive attribute. Being average, average is a choice. Average blows. Oh.